Hey everybody, welcome back to the Resin Testing Goblet. Today we have the Sun Blue Red Wax Resin and we're going to see what it's all about. Full disclosure, this resin was sent to me by Sun Blue for free. I did not have to pay for it nor any money exchanged to my hands so I can be as unbiased as possible. So the Resin Testing Gauntlet is a series where I do all sorts of mechanical testing to see how it performs. If you want to know more about all the other resins that I already tested, you can see a video right over there. Sunlu claims that this is an ABS-like resin and we are going to find out. First, a word of caution, the smell test should not be repeated, it is only for you to know how bad the smell is. You should use proper protection like a mask or ventilation. Yeah, it's a lot softer, it's still a bit stinky. I would give it a 1 out of 3, which is not bad, which is also not super great. It's not in between, it's a bit better than in between. Then looking at the print quality, this was printed on the Algo Jupiter using an ACF sheet and the printing results are just amazing. The details are all present, there is a nice and matte finish on this resin. The only thing I would say is that this is a red wax resin, well I don't know how red wax is supposed to look but this is more of an orange for me. This little sword was sitting on here and I just smacked it off while I was cleaning the shop. So this was attached to it, now it isn't anymore. <laughs> And then we have the warping. So the ABS like was super great and this should be an ABS like but as you can see we have a lot of potato chips. Even this straight piece is severely warped and has a lot of play on it. Then we have the nut and bolt test and the details on the thread are amazing. It looks like a perfect print. Then the threads on the inside of the nuts look to be all accounted for. This is a very good print. Let's see how the tolerances are. Yep, perfect tolerances. This is a great print with great tolerances. All details are present. So this is a very nice printing resin. So far, this seems to be a mixed bag. We have great printer resolution. We have great details on this one. We have great details on the nut and bolt, but we see some warping, which for an ABS like resin, yeah, seems to be a bit strange. Now, one thing I failed to mention in the beginning was that there were two types of exposures on these tests. So we have the regular one, and that is with the nut and bolt test that worked perfectly. This was also correctly for this one. Then we have the normally exposed parts, which are going to show up as a lower result. And then we have the overexposed parts, which are going to end up being stronger. So if you are going to see the charts, you will see that there will be two results on it. We have the normally exposed ones and we have the overexposed ones and one thing that surprised me is that even though we only took about I think it was half a second of more exposure on that resin the results were absolutely mind-blowing because that half second completely transformed that resin to other properties as you can see at the testing and speaking about the testing, let's get the testing in front of us. One thing we can already conclude is that on the push test, the overexposed parts were dramatically stiffer. And you can see it in the footage that those parts were actually breaking under load and that the parts that were correctly exposed, so the ones from the nut and bolt test, didn't break and just flexed like the regular ABS lag. Now one big difference between the regular ABS lag and the red wax is the results. So we have the regular Sunlu red wax with the regular exposure and we get a result of 124 newton. Now if we overexpose it with half a second we get 140 newton of strength in the bending test and those parts were breaking. If we continue to the pull test the difference was even more mind blowing. So the regular correctly exposed Sunlu resin only hit about 225 Newton, which was even lower than the Siraya Tenacious. And when we overexposed the resin, we got about 319 Newton. So we are already seeing a difference of 60 Newton of exposure. Now, this is 
expected that if you overexpose a resin that you will have stronger parts even though we only overexpose it for half a second we get a dramatic jump in performance and we could see it in the parts that were warping even more badly i will show you a still frame of it you can see that the overexposed parts were curling more upwards than the regular exposed parts even though we overexposed the resin the results of the pool test were not amazing so we have the overexposed ones which were 390 newton and if we compare it with the regular sunlu abs leg those had 393 newton which is already a big difference in performance and if we take the regular exposed resin we have 252 newton which is the lowest result we ever received on the resin testing gauntlet and if we look at the warping like i mentioned the regular exposed parts were less warped so i will give it a one out of a three and a half scale so one isn't that bad three and a half is yeah not good at all and the overexposed sunru resin got a three and a half so the difference in warping is quite big even though we only overexposed about half a second then if we look at the stiffness test so this is going to be this part the stiffness part was printed at the regular settings so these results are still valid and we have super flexible resin now the regular sunlu abs like was already pretty flexible because if we took the weight at 12 out of 12 which was the most outer point we got a 10 centimeter of flex but this time we got a staggering 24 centimeters of flexing on weight yeah so i broke it flexing on weight so this is a very flexible resin even at the halfway point we have 15.5 centimeters of flexing and if you wonder why this resin broke i have wiggled it a lot and it's quite cold in here so this resin is becoming more brittle because it is cold then we have the thread strength test and it is with this block this block was actually overexposed because i could not get this out of the vault without sticking to the fvp even the fvp was an acf sheet and it was still yanking it out of the support and it was supported like crazy so this resin tends to stick very well to the sheet and that triggered me to do some testing on the overexposure to see how bad it was and i have to say i was shocked about the results so the first hole the one in the middle i totally screwed up my tap was not good secured in the drill and i just absolutely mangled it so i drilled a second hole and those results were more in line with what i expected with about 17 newton meters before failing which is right on the money with the sunlu water washable but it is one step behind the sunlu abs then let's talk about the pricing the sunlu red wax is about a dollar cheaper than the regular sunlu abs at 28 dollars making it not really a great value for the resin because if we regularly expose it we could see that it's quite weak of resin it is very flexible which means that it's going to be very good for miniatures it's not going to snap as easily as the regular standard resins so that's a plus point but we traded it for or a loss of strength and even if we overexpose it we could see a diminishing return in flexibility so if you are going to overexpose it you will be getting stronger parts but they will break more easily now would i recommend you to get this sunlu red wax resin i would say only if you are looking for flat prints and with flat prints i mean this color that this resin is providing you is very unique it is a very flat of a color i really enjoy the color of it but it comes with the downsides that it seems to be down on the mechanical properties and if we compare it with the sunlu abs like so this was printed with the sunlu abs we can see that the color of the red wax is quite a bit duller than the abs like so if you are looking for super flat prints then this is going to be just the resin for you if you are looking for the best combination of flexibility and strength then i would go for the sunlu abs like we have done all the testing and now we know more about the sunlu red wax and i am very interested in your suggestions what you think about the overexposure test if i should do it on every resin or if you are thinking that this is not important and i should just use the regular normal exposed 
settings. So this resin testing was really interesting. We could see that overexposing resin adjusted the capabilities of a resin. So that makes me wonder how valid my testing is so far, because if I don't nail it every time these settings, then we will see some fluctuations in the numbers and the flexibility and the tapping and all of that. So like I always say, take my numbers with a grain of salt and use them just to get a basic idea on how these resins act on mechanical stresses. That's gonna be it for me. Sound off down in the comments what you thought about the overexposure. And if you want to see those montages of the testing that I do with the pull test, with the push test, the bending stuff, I will start cutting into it. I'm going to leave them out of the video because editing those pieces of video are taking a long time and I can see a huge dip at that part. So sound off in the comments down below if I should keep it or if I should remove it and show you some flashes of it. And before you go, I have a lot of other videos that you can watch right over there. We have a complete resin testing gauntlet, resin many, many resins, and all those resins are right up front of the closet. We have tested, I think it's now about 12 or 13 resins. I still have two other kinds of resins waiting for the testing, and I am making a huge build. Wait, I'm going to spoil you something. I am actually making something huge. This is going to be so fun to build and it's going to smooth our lives. <laughs> All right, thank you for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.